Today I've got three easy sublimation crafts for you. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Project number one, we're going to be doing a shirt. I'm going to start off by making my own design. So I've gone to Canva. I do have a free account there. I'll have it linked below for you. I'm going to go to wall calendar just because it's the size of a piece of paper. So we start off with this white box. If you go to elements, you can type in whatever you like. I'm going to put in watercolor and I'm going to pick this really pretty teal here and I'm just going to shrink it down a little. I don't want it to be full size. Then I'm going to put turtle and then go down and find turtles. I like this one. I think it looks good with that watercolor background. Then I'm going to go to text on the side, add a heading, and I'm going to change my font to Anton. So you can see here it's Anton. I'm going to take out that and then put in save our oceans. You can choose whatever you like here. That's the beauty of making your own designs. So I'm going to go to effects, splice. I'm going to remove the offset. And then over here, I'm going to change that inside color to white. That's going to show up so much better. So this is what it looks like. And we're going to save it and send it to an editor where we can reverse our image. It's got to be backwards. So here we go. Then we're going to save it and we're going to print it. So I'm going to make sure I choose the correct printer. I have three, so I'm going to choose my Epson. It's the one that I converted especially for sublimation. I've got that video linked for you. I'm going to choose the type of paper that I'm using, and then I'm going to print. So I am working with Hippo today. I have worked with them before, and I have two videos about sublimation before this. I have their sublimation paper and the ink. I converted a printer, an Epson printer. I absolutely love these products. I believe in these products. You're going to find the links to Hippo and all of their products and my affiliate links down in the description box below. So here you can see I'm waiting for it to print out. I did speed this up. It does take just a minute for it to come out, but I've sped it up. And look at the beautiful color. Now what you might notice is it looks like dark blue. The color changes once you press it. So for me, I wasn't sure because I didn't remove the background. I didn't want there to be like a gray cast or frame around it. So I'm just going to go in and trim this out. Be sure you check out Craft to Craft. It's a giveaway series that Hippo is doing. I've got that link in the description box below for you. So here it is all trimmed out. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to make sure that I don't have too much in case there's a gray box. You're going to need heat resistant tape to hold your product or your paper in place. And this is the shirt that I've chose to use. I chose it because it is polyester. You need at least 70 or 75% polyester to get a good chemical reaction. This is 95% polyester and I love the, the color of this shirt. It looks like watercolor too, right? So I'm going to take my butcher paper and put it down over my surface. I'm going to pull my shirt over the machine so that I only have the top part of it on the thing. And I've got it where it is lined up between the seams so it's nice and straight. I'm going to make sure that this is in the correct position and then tape it down. You do not want this to move because what will happen is called ghosting and you'll have like blurriness in your picture and you don't want that to happen. So using some type of heat resistant tape is going to be your best friend. Preheat your machine, whatever you're using, and get ready to set it. I've also put another piece of butcher paper on top. After it is done, you can carefully remove that outer paper. And I've let mine cool just a minute because it's super hot. And then you can just begin to remove your tape. You can see that right through the paper now, and you really couldn't see it before. That's when you know it's done. Now, do you see that beautiful green? It looked blue, didn't it? It changes when you get it on the paper. It's really stunning. Look at this. It's so beautiful. Every detail on that watercolor turned out perfectly. This is why I love Hippo products. They really back up what they 
what they advertise. I just, I love it. I have not had a fail yet with their products. Okay, so now on to project number two. Now this one was a little bit of an experiment for me because I heard this could be done, that you could use some type of acrylic on wood or on other products and make it work. So I thought this is the perfect opportunity to try it so that if I fail or I succeed, then you can follow me or not. So here it is, three coats dried outside. I let them dry overnight. I sprayed them, you know, three times, let them dry in between. Now I'm just choosing which one I want. And I've chosen the print that I like. And this one does have kind of a grayish background behind it. I'm flipping it over. There's no words, so I didn't necessarily have to reverse it. I'm just gonna measure and make sure that I'm fairly centered here. And it looks like I am. And then when you have it where you want it, go ahead and get that tape out again and tape it in place. Y'all, the struggle with tape is real. It doesn't matter what kind it is. I always have this struggle. But I just use my fingernail till I feel the edge of it and I can pull it up just like that. All right. So then you're going to cut off your pieces. You don't need a lot of it. You just need enough to put it down and hold it without any slipping. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I was really nervous about doing this. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was nervous about trying this with this acrylic because I thought, well, you know, what if I burn it? I just, I was worried. But look, we're going to do the best that we can. And I'm just going to fold my paper over on top of it now, like I did before. I'm going to take my mini press for this. And I'm just going to go to work on it. You can see my hesitation. I was nervous. So I'm going to put this down here. You're going to put it down for the whatever amount of time that is required for whatever type of um, base that you're using. I've done mine. And then I'm going to pull it off. Now, notice this. You see how, okay, my print is set. And that's good. But you see how it's sticking I saw another person do this, and I can't remember the name, so I do apologize. Um, you can let me know if you've seen my video and you know what I'm talking about. But the paper comes off with a damp rag so easily. It just wipes right away. No stickiness. There's no lifting. The color is, with sublimation, it is a chemical process. It is bonded with that material. You cannot wipe it or rub it off. Look at that. Oh my gosh, the beautiful purples. It looks so vintage and pretty to me. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a craft project that you can try. Maybe you're doing sublimation, but you don't exactly know what to do once you get these projects done. Well, I wanna make this look vintage. It already had that feel to me because of the wood color in the background. So I'm just taking some white wax and adding to it all around the edges, kind of Maybe trying to blend out the darker spots where that line is showing underneath. And by the way, that's not a sublimation issue. That's because of the type, I just printed out a regular photograph, like a regular picture that I found on Pinterest, and it had a gray background. I could have done like I did with the turtle and gone in and just cut around it so there wouldn't be the shadow and the edge, but I'm gonna fix it where you can't even really tell. So this is how it looks with the white wax, and it does kind of fade it out or give it like a, you know, a faded look on the edges. But I'm going to now take the darker wax, and I'm going to add that onto all of these little scrolly areas. And by the way, I did break one of the corners off, but I fixed that too. We can always work with it. We don't give up, right? Okay, so I'm just going over all of these corners. And I'm trying to get down in those cracks as well because I want to give it, again, an aged look and it gives it more dimension other than just you know being a flat piece so you're going to continue around just like this i'm also going to go over my edges with that all around the trim a piece like this could certainly be used for easter it can be used for spring. I know that when I thrift, I find little wood pieces and little things like this all the time. 
You can certainly also get these at Dollar Tree if that is something that you are interested in. I know I've seen wood pieces there. You could maybe try this on a scrap piece of wood, maybe from a project that you've done previously, or maybe you find it on the side of the road. Um, you could find construction sites everywhere, people who are doing little DIYs of their own and they just throw a bunch of stuff out or put it on the side of the road. Now, what do you think? Isn't this precious? It looks so vintage to me. I really like this. And you can see that I broke the top corner on the left, but I'll fix it. It's only a little bit. All right, I have got some old ribbon here that I got at the thrift store. And we're gonna make a little hanging sign out of this. Very simple project, y'all. I'm going to just cut those little ends on the slant. I don't want them to fray. And then just using the holes that are already there, I'm gonna feed my um, ribbon through there. It's a thin ribbon, but you could use jute. Maybe you do a different type of project or you like a different style. I'm adding more cottage into my home, so I think that this is a very fitting little picture and little hanging sign, and this beautiful satin ribbon just works perfect. Now this is delicate. As I said, I broke a piece of it, so I'm just trying to keep that in mind while I tie this off so that I don't break it again. And I'm just gonna tie just a simple little tie here. Pull that string down in the back. I'm not even gonna cut it off because I think it looks nice just like that. And then when you flip it over, you have a beautiful little hanging sign. If you wanted to add some little greenery or something to this, you could. I'm just gonna add another little simple shoestring bow. This is how we make it. Oh, my hands are a mess. Look at all that wax on my hands. Okay, so that's an easy bow, right? Simple, simple to make. You can just pull it down, make those little loops as long as you want. I wanna kinda of flatten it in the middle, make sure I got the right side up. And I'm gonna put it right there where I broke it. And I'm just gonna mask it. You won't even be able to tell. Add a little glue, you can use hot glue or whatever you have, but this is what I had. So I'm just gonna put this on here, making sure I put the right side down, let it dry. All right, project number three, our last project for today. I'm going to use one of these microfiber washcloths from the Dollar Tree. You can see they come in a four pack, so you're really stretching your dollar, and these are 100% polyester. I've done another little printout here on that paper, on that special paper. I'm gonna cut off my tag, of course, and then you can go ahead and place down on your mat your project. And I'm going to be cutting this out because it is lined. I don't want the box in my picture, so I'm gonna cut to the inside of those lines. Then I won't have any problem. And because I printed this off as a free sublimation print, I also don't have to worry about any type of a weird gray background, which is great because this is a white item. So the color ideally should be perfect because it's white so it's the lightest color possible and they do recommend white and the very light colors and because it's 100% polyester. So let's see what we can do with this. I've pressed it out a little bit. I'm going to take this and put it down. I'm going to tape it off just like I did with my other projects because we don't want it to move. So just a little bit here and there to hold it in place. I actually could have taped it to the mat if I wanted to, but I just tried to keep it right there on the edge of the fabric. All right, get it all pressed down, gonna cover it with my butcher paper, and then I'm gonna take my little mini press and just press it down. Be sure that you use whatever directions you need to use for the type of fabric you're using. And then when the time is up, I'm gonna remove that and I'm peeking under to see what it looks like. <gasps> and y'all look at this. Look how beautiful that black turned out on the white. That is perfect. I am going to go ahead and choose some more of these black and white prints and do them on the rest of the cloths that I have because these are gorgeous. I love this. Of all the project I did, this is my favorite. We use microfiber towels in our house as napkins. So I've got a little recommendation for you to make this nice and pretty for Easter. You can just fold it, kind of cinch it up in the middle, take a pretty ribbon, whatever coordinates with your style and your decor. You can tie it off, make a little bow in it. And if you like, you could leave it just like that. 
This would also be a nice presentation in the bathroom. You can flip it over and have it beside your plate looking like this, and that would be pretty. And you can also add a little bits of greenery. So I'm just gonna tuck some faux baby's breath in here just to kind of accentuate it, give it that little pretty Easter look. And they're pieces I already had, so they were free. You can't beat free, right? I love this. I love all three of these projects. Love them. So here's a recap. Here is the last project we did. This is gonna be our napkin, but it's actually a microfiber washcloth. This is our wood that we use the acrylic spray paint on. Made a pretty little vintagey cottage sign, and my little bunny's holding it for me. And then here's our beautiful watercolor Oceans t-shirt. Isn't this stunning? I would love a thumbs up if you like these projects. And if you would subscribe, I promise you will not regret it. I'm all about budget-friendly DIYs and decor and crafting on this channel. I also like to try out new products and show you how these things work if you ever have any questions. And I always want to show you how you can do things that it costs maybe a little bit more of an investment on a budget. I believe in you. I believe that you can do these projects. And I just really want you to believe in yourself. Thank you so very much for stopping by. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.